welcome. And today we're going to be drawing this uh, salt shaker. And the reason I picked it, some of you might think it's kind of a boring subject matter, but I uh, really like it for practice with metal and glass. And if you can get those two down, learn how to draw them very well, people will think you are just extraordinary. So, and glass is fairly simple to draw. And I'll show you that today. And again, I'm going to use the number two pencil, regular school pencil. Um, you have a number of options for erasers. Uh, I will be using the end of my eraser a lot because it's a good eraser. It's not all dried up yet. A lot of these pencils have dried up erasers and they really will mark your paper instead of erasing your pencil marks. So again, if you have um, a blending tool, these are really nice to have and I would um, try to persuade you to buy some if you can because I'll be using it a lot because of this nice little point gets into a lot of small areas where your fingers, you know, really you can't get into very, you know, close little area tight areas. Um, you can buy them in package with different sizes, um, little pencil sharpener you're going to need. Uh, I would have a couple of extra pencils ready to go that are sharpened. Uh, another thing I would recommend purchasing at least one darker pencil. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit how I'm going to use that today. You don't have to have it. This is a five, and I would recommend a five or a six because it's a nice soft dark lead and it will help you get your darks in quicker. You won't have to spend so much time um, doing layers after layers. And today the first thing we're going to do when we start like we normally do is we're going to start by composing our paper. And because this is a small object and I really don't want to draw it the size of this whole paper, I'm going to I'm going to mark half of my paper. I'm only going to use half of it. And that is about works out to be about a four and a half by six and a half. And then you can use the other half to draw another one again for more practice. Um, if you have a smaller piece of paper, this size works good. So again, we have to compose this picture. And com composition is really important. Composition and proportion. If you get those two correct in a drawing, um, you will have success. If one of those things is off, uh, you won't be happy with your drawing. So I'm going to mark another half here. I don't know if you can see that. Because, because we have this nice little shadow, we want to make sure we get that shadow on the page. It doesn't have to be all of the shadow, but we want to get at least some of it. So I'm going to, if you notice here on our reference drawing, our photograph, that salt shaker side is just about at the halfway mark. We don't really want to put something in the middle of the page, composition-wise, that just doesn't look so great, so we try to off-center things a little bit. And I'm going to, I'm going to make a mark for the top of my salt shaker. So I'm going to say, I'm just, just going to pick a spot up at the top somewhere. And I'm going to draw a line straight across. Now, because if you notice with this salt shaker, it's really a rectangle. So I'm going to use little pieces of paper. You don't have to do this. I'm kind of doing this so you can see. I'm making a view catcher. And what that's going to do is just going to show us the areas around the salt shaker. So you can see how that salt shaker kind of fits really almost perfectly into a rectangle. So if we draw our line straight down, we're going to make a little rectangle. We're going to make a rectangle side. We're not going to, we don't know how far down we're going to go yet because we're going to do some comparative measuring. I've been talking about comparative measuring for a while. And that really helps with proportions. And what you do is you're actually different sizes of your subject matter against different areas to get the proportion correct. You see at the top, look at the corners are rounded off. This area on the outside of your subject matter is called negative space. Negative space will also help you figure out if your drawing's going correctly. 
So you have um, areas that go rounded out almost to the side and then they go back in, down, out, and over. So you have a lot of little niches here. This is the hardest part of your drawing today. We'll be getting that lid correct. So we wanna make this oval. And I'm gonna say the oval is down here somewhere. And it doesn't really come all the way to the side of that rectangle, does it? So here's my box, my rectangle. And I'm gonna say that somewhere here will be the side of that rectangle. Somewhere over here. And if you notice, this oval doesn't go all the way over to the edge of our lid, does it? It goes inside, it goes inside a ways. So we wanna make sure that we have that inside. So I'm gonna make another little mark there. So our marks at the top, little mark there, and we're gonna do a little connect the dots. And you can round it off. I just kind of do it real sketchy, and then I can come back in and I can correct it and make it more of an oval shape. But this will just help you at least approximate where that oval is and what it should, the size it should be and how it should look. So I can round up those edges a little bit. If you look at your oval now and you look at your corners and it's getting to be correct. I mean, you have these corner areas that are open. Next thing we want to do is we want to put that lid, these edges, and look how they come out farther than the oval. They come out a little bit farther. And you're going to mark, if you also notice that this is comparative measuring, we're going to measure the very, that oval and we're going to compare it to our next set of two rings. And it's almost exactly the same size. So if you take your pencil and you mark where that is, and then you come down. So our next ring will be right here. And there's a halfway mark in between those two where we have another value. This is a darker value, this is a lighter value. So we're gonna put a mark there, about halfway in between those. And then you have one more little ring left at the bottom. And I would say it's almost the same size as this one. Maybe a little narrower. So we're gonna make another one. So now we have these three value spaces for the lid. And we know how far out this edge is gonna come and we know where it's gonna to go to. And actually, if you look, this is down farther than this comes up to a little narrow area up here. Down farther, little narrow area. So we're gonna go up farther. So this is our first ring. We're gonna round it off. And if these areas are too big or they don't look right, we can come back in and we can change that. Now this next ring, it actually is now starting to come in just a little bit. And if you see here that it also comes up higher, comes and meets down here. So we're gonna say it comes up about that high and we're gonna do our little connect the dot thing again. From this point, it goes straight down to the next ring, bottom of that ring. So we're just gonna go straight. And again, it gets narrower here at the edge and it comes down farther in the middle. So we're gonna do the connect a dot again. 
little sketchy lines. They don't have to be perfect. You can figure them out and correct them as we go. So we've, we've got that lid pretty much in place. There's a little lip here, a little rounded lip where it meets the glass. So there's just a little rounded area that comes here. I put that lip on so you'd be able to look at your negative space and see if it looks correct. And it's looking pretty good. There's also another little edge or lip here where there is another little round space. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time until we start shading that. But just so you know, there's another little line that goes through there. And then this curves out. It goes to a rectangle. We're starting to get the shape. What we need to do now is we need to figure out how long, where is the bottom of our salt shaker. And we're going to do that by using the lid. We already know what our lid looks like. We know how big it is. So all we have to do is do a comparative measuring. So I'm going to say my lid is right about there. And I'm going to go right to the bottom of the lid, not that little lip that we put in, not the little glass, but where the end of the lid is. So there, it's a little over halfway. And here, I would say it is one and uh, maybe a couple of eighths. So it'd be one, one and not quite a full one, three fourths. One and three fourths. That sounds good. So there's one, and we'll go to about here. So I'm going to say that's the bottom of my. And you know, really, when you're doing something simple like this, a little object like a salt shaker, nobody's going to know if this proportion is off or not. There's all different sizes and shapes of salt shakers, right? But the reason I'm showing you this, and the reason it's important to learn comparative measuring is when you do get to something that is important to figure out proportions correctly, you want to learn the tools on how to do that. So there we've got the bottom. We've got another little ring here. It goes around maybe at the same size as this. So the next thing we need to do is figure out the bottom. <clears throat> if you notice, this, I'm going to take the rectangle off now. You've already seen it. You know how it works. You can make your own view catchers with just those little pieces of paper, or you can buy view catchers. This actually comes off to an angle. It's not straight. It's not much of an angle, but there is a little bit of an angle where that shadow starts. And how far down does the shadow come? It is not quite halfway from the bottom to this top. Um, so we're going to figure that shadow is right there. You can do comparative measuring if you want to figure out where and how much. So maybe it's uh, two thirds. Maybe a little more. Doesn't have to be perfect. I say that's pretty close. So now we know where it is. How big is it? How wide is it? How far out does it go? And this might surprise you because to me, when I look at it, it looks like it's almost the same size as the salt shaker is wide. So we're going to look. There is the comparative measuring of the salt shaker. We're going to take it over to the shadow, and the shadow comes out 
just a little bit bigger. So there is our measurement of the salt shaker. Take it over here. And it almost comes out to the edge that I've already drawn. So we're going to put a little mark there. And you're going to connect the dots again. So we have our whole drawing of our salt shaker on here. We need to put in a few detail areas, like down here at the feet and where the salt is. And then we can start shading. So if you notice this shadow here, it's actually rounded on this side. So we're going to cut that corner. And it comes up a little bit farther. And let's see, make it about, about there, maybe. So there's a, this line here too where the shadow is, where that's, it's the salt that's hitting the bottom of the, um, the base of the salt shaker. And it gives us this nice little line. So we're gonna figure out where that is. And that is about, hmm, if you're judging from here, it's almost halfway between the base of where your bottom is without the shadow. So without the shadow, it's about halfway. So we're going to draw that line across. Now again, these lines can be changed and moved around if you feel it's wrong. We're going to put a little dot here where the arch is, and we're going to do connect the dots again. So we just, we just about have figured out where all of the lines are for this. We still need the salt line. So we're gonna figure out where that is. And it's almost halfway between here and the shadow and the lid. So I'm just gonna say my salt is right about halfway between the shadow and the lid. And then it makes a little drop right here. And you notice that it doesn't come all the way over to your edge. It stops right here because this is that fun glass stuff, that wavy lines that glass makes. And it'll be fun putting those in because that's really what makes it look like glass. Another thing that's kind of interesting to notice is that this line is pretty pretty much straight but because we see this wavy line here we tend to think this this outside line is wavy too it's not the inside line is wavy not the outside line and if you look here on this side this line comes down and stops and then it picks up again here you have a space here that disappears and those disappearing lines happen all the time in nature we tend to want to draw them all in, but it's better if we can leave some of those disappearing edges. This edge disappears, and we know it's there. And because we know it's there, we want to draw it, but it's really disappeared into the shadow. So those are the areas that are important to keep as disappearing edges. So we're going to do some little areas here just to mark them in so we know where to shade. All right, now if you notice the values, the darkest value of course would be the lid and the shadow. And this shadow extends over into here. And that value for the shadow is pretty much the same as this value. Compare the shadow of the, um, the shadow value to the lid. The lid is still the very darkest, and it's these top two areas that are the darkest dark. So we wanna make sure we, we get those in. And if you look right here in the center, is not quite as dark as the outer edges. 
So we want to make these outer edges our very darkest dark. And I'm going to just kind of draw around. Instead of erasing this out this time, I'm just going to draw a little area where it should be and try to draw around it. So we can start. And as I'm going, using the side of my pencil, And because you have such small areas here, we're going to be using a lot of the pencil point as we do this. Because there's just some areas you're not going to be able to get into. And we're going to continue. And I'm going to do the two darkest areas first. And I'm going to get them fairly dark before I move on to the next one. And I'll show you my art pencil that's <coughs> 5B. And remember, we're going to do this layers, layers and layers so we, we can erase and come back. If you draw too hard and you make actual indention in the paper, that mark will stay. And it's hard to get rid of. You really won't after you indent your paper. So we do it in soft layers. And you can see how dark this is getting with my softer pencil. And before I get too far, and I lose this little line, the little circle, I'm going to erase part of that. And now I will try to stay away from it. We worked so hard at getting that nice little oval. I don't want to lose it in our soft um, drawing, shading. So we're going to go a little bit darker. You can use the pencil point now. And I'll go back to the number two pencil. And just start shading it in a little bit at a time, very lightly. If you're having a hard time seeing values, what's the darkest dark, what's the lightest light, squint and look at your reference. Squinting will help you see the differences between all the different values. Values are really hard to get right. I constantly battle with figuring out values. And I've been drawing and painting for a lot of years. So this one almost disappears over here on the edge too. You hardly see that little oval line. All right, and if, there's also a difference here between these values. You know, that's the beauty of metal, is the metal gets dark and light and dark. It's that um, bending of the metal and the reflections on it. So we've, all, we've got these kind of nice and dark. So we're going to continue on with the rest. We're going to overlap the dark that you just put in. So as you come up, overlap that.
Okay, you can clean up these little areas a little bit. Look at your lid and if you have your blending tool, you can go ahead and blend this area here. And then it'll help you see, do we need to go darker? Do we need to go lighter? Blend it right into these, these other little sections. We're going to have to get going on the glass. You know, the great thing about these blending sticks, you have to clean them off once in a while, but what's nice about them is they've already got pencil on them. So you can actually go in and you can do like a little transitional area around this mark or highlight mark. Transitional, but what I mean by that is it transitions from dark to light. And you need your transitional values in there to make it look real. If you're just going hopping from dark into light and you have an edge, it's not going to look correct. All right, we got to move on to the salt and the and our glass. I'm going to put in this area here. And there's actually this soft gray line that goes up the side. But if you notice, it actually curves in. This outside line is straight, but when it goes into the glass, it curves. And that's what makes it that glass look. The outside line will be straight, and the inside line will be curved. And it goes up and it just disappears. This is going to be the tricky part. How do we make this white look like white? How do we make that look like there's a reflection there up here too? The only way you can do that is if you put value around them. White on white paper, how do you get a, um, a white highlight? The only way you can get a white highlight is by putting value around the white. And this grayness doesn't go all the way down to the salt. It kind of stops.
look at these areas as shapes. Instead of seeing them as salt shaker, just look at them as shapes. Lots of fun shapes in here. Almost abstract. If you don't, if you're not sure how your drawing is going, you can't really tell if you've got the, the values right, etc. Um, take a picture of it or look at it in a mirror, and that will give you a good idea. Because I love working on easels because easel will allow you to get away from something and look at it from far away, and you really need to do that occasionally. We get too close to it and we can't see it. And taking a picture of it with your, with your camera works almost the same as getting away from it. You can finish off some of these little edges, sharpen them up a little bit. You can leave some of them soft. I wouldn't sharpen up all your edges, just occasionally where you might need it, especially where the metal is because the metal is hard. It's got hard edges. And I can see this is great looking um, the way I'm looking because I get to see this as a mirror image. And I can see what's off. I can see that this edge comes out too far and I could erase part of that. Or I could make this one bump out more. You know, I've been drawing a long time and I don't get my drawings perfect the first time. I redraw a lot. And um, you have an, another piece of paper or if you have the divided in half, and I would go ahead and use that to try again. Um, 
we're going to finish this off by finishing the shadow. You can see that there's a tone here, could be worked on a little bit more. We left it light, whereas it's coming down to the salt. Um, there is another little mark here with light. Oh, I didn't show you the, if you want to do like the little holes up here, take a little corner of your eraser or the top of your pencil and just make some little dots. Doesn't have to be perfect. You don't want all of them in there. Just space them out wherever you can. Okay. Now you're going to go back in and you're going to put a dark edge. You can even go around it, but you need the dark edge. 